Just trying to be the world's best X-Man. Sorry, X-Person. The character of Deadpool has brought absurd amounts of joy to the comic book world thanks to Ryan Reynolds and the incredible team of creators, writers, and filmmakers. We've also been graced with not just one, but two excellent Deadpool movies. There are so many great behind-the-scenes stories to tell when it comes to these two films. We're willing to bet there are a number of tidbits even the biggest Deadpool movie fan might not be aware of. Luckily for you, we've taken a deep dive into Deadpool's cinematic universe to uncover some of our favorite behind-the-scenes secrets. Let's jump right in. Don't try to chase me. Wait! Ready to be touched again. Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 are overflowing with all kinds of Easter eggs, in-jokes, innuendos, and so much more. You could spend far too much time sitting around, watching these movies back-to-back, -back, and exploring every little thing they have to offer. Honestly, that might not be a bad way to spend your time. In fact, we'd encourage it. Even after those in-depth, analytical viewings, you still might not be privy to all the little behind-the-scenes details about these productions. Deadpool made his first cinematic appearance in the 2009 film X-Men Origins Wolverine. The film was less than popular with comic book fans to say the least. But there was one thing everyone could agree on. Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool was an inspired casting choice. Following the release of X-Men Origins, Reynolds rallied for a true-to-its-source R-rated Deadpool film and fans could not be more excited. But this was seen as a major risk for 20th Century Fox. After all, Deadpool wasn't a well-known character, plus making the film R-rated might prevent it from raking in the box office dough necessary to be deemed a success. Reynolds was unfazed. He continued to push for Deadpool to be made and, more importantly, for it to be true to its vulgar and explicit comic book roots. Reynolds received early support from some surprising sources. Deadpool screenwriters Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick had famed film directors David Fincher and James Cameron on their side. Fincher and Cameron kept pushing Fox to make the film, stressing the brilliance of its screenplay and suggesting the studio had a hit on its hands. Obviously, when James Cameron tells you you need to make a film, you do it. This is the guy who wrote and directed the mega hits Titanic and Avatar, after all. You just don't argue with him. Reynolds took his support for the writers a step further. When he learned the production had not set aside money in the budget for Reese and Warnick to be on set, Reynolds was flabbergasted by the decision and offered up his protests. Reynolds believed the writing team was crucial to Deadpool's success. They needed to be on set as often as possible to help with rewrites and to make the script the best it could possibly be. Reynolds held this belief so strongly, he actually paid the writers to be on set out of his own paycheck. They don't call Deadpool the Merc with a Mouth for nothing. Reynolds was adamant that his kids were not allowed on set. Looking at the final product, it's not difficult to understand why. The sheer amount of F-bombs and real bombs being dropped on the daily was overwhelming. It didn't help that the first time Reynolds' one-year-old daughter saw him in costume, she burst into tears. So much for bring your daughter to work day. Getting Brad Pitt to cameo in your film has got to be considered a major accomplishment. I mean, this dude is one of the top stars in the world. If he takes the time to stop by your production for a short part, it's got to be a big confidence booster. I'm sure Deadpool 2's production team were thrilled to have him, even if his appearance was brief. And want to know the best part? Pitt's pay wasn't his standard multi-million dollar check. Instead, it was the minimum amount of money necessary per the Screen Actors Guild regulations, plus a cup of coffee. Not too shabby, right? Obviously, Brad Pitt wasn't the only big celebrity cameo attached to Deadpool 2. Another glorious moment comes from none other than Matt Damon. And he's almost completely unrecognizable, sitting in the back of a pickup truck with Alan Tudyk discussing why toilet paper is overrated. In fact, Damon was so unrecognizable that a large number of the cast and crew didn't even realize he was the one under all those prosthetics and makeup. And it might not be a legitimate cameo, but Reynolds did find a way to give Taylor Swift a shout out in the film. Swift and Reynolds' wife Blake Lively are besties in real life. So during Deadpool's depression following the loss of his one true love Vanessa, Reynolds opted to wear a shirt with two kittens on it. Under the image of the kittens is the caption, Olivia and Meredith, friends forever. Those kittens happen to be Swift's cats. After the first Deadpool film success, you'd think that Reynolds and company would have the creative freedom to do whatever they wanted, right? Well, not necessarily. This much was proved when Fox made Reynolds and the creative team cut a punchline at Disney's expense from the film's final cut. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Reynolds stated, This is a sore spot for me because there's a joke in the movie that is not in the movie now because I'm probably not even allowed to say this, but Fox made me take it out. It had more to do with Disney and they made me take it out. As I look back at it, I think maybe that was a wise decision. So what exactly was the joke about? 
Naturally, Reynolds wouldn't go into the specific details. We're willing to bet it had something to do with the Disney-Fox merger that was taking place at the time. 